Hello YouTubes! Ah, the good old days. No fancy Windows, Mac OS, Gem, Workbench, whatever. Just a straight DOS machine. I know what you think. Oh no. This channel is turning into one of these retro channels where Dad faffles around with hardware older than most of his viewers. No. <laughs> it's not going to happen, believe me. Uh, this is far from what I'm doing here. Since you know me, you probably imagine, oh, this must be run on some emulator. Uh, okay, let's get through the possibilities here. It's not running on a PC. This is a standalone machine. This is not a PC emulating an old DOS box. So the next valid thing would be a Raspberry Pi. You know, Raspberry Pi runs everything, emulates anything. So a Raspberry Pi isn't so far-fetched. No, wrong again. So it's not a Raspi and it's not a DOS box on a PC. So uh, I'll show you what this is. It's my good friend an ESP32 on a TTGO blah video board. I'll link this in the description. I can't remember these things. And yeah, this is emulating an XT with a hard drive, with a keyboard interface. Actually, the Magenta plug is a physical keyboard. You could connect a mouse here. My mouse doesn't work because it's probably too new. You probably need a old PC mouse or a USB mouse that supports the old protocols. So there are adapters, these little greenish ones, you know, but I don't have one around. And on the other side, there's a VGA connector. This goes into a VGA capture card here. And as you can tell, this can even do games here. Well, I'm not really good with these. And yeah, you didn't see this before. So I'm um, sorry for that. Not going to play games here. And the best part, this doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. You don't need to spend lots of money on a, say, Raspi Pi 4 something, something, something with lots of gigabytes of RAM. This board is available for, say, a tenner around somewhere there. I hear you asking, how does the software get on this thing? I mean, uh, there must be a something. How do I fly this? Oh, I crashed. Well, let me show you, and you're going to like this. Shit because this is all done in an Arduino IDE. Yeah, you load the PC, the XT, into the ASP32 with an Arduino IDE. Isn't this crazy? Yeah, it is. I can't take any credits for doing this stuff. This is all done by this guy over here, Fabrizio Di Vittorio. Sorry for butchering your name. If you're watching this, mate, I salute you, for reals. This is something like black magic to me. I think I know one or two things about programming, but what he did here, wow. To get this going, you simply install the usual ESP32 over here with the boards and select a ESP32 dev board. This is all you need to do. And then you include a library, the FabGL library. I'll open the library manager now. Over in the library manager, you simply type FabGL, that's the name of the library. At the moment of recording, this is 1.0.9, and you see I already have this installed. And this brings everything to the table you need to run your XT here. To <laughs> install the XT on the ESP32 is so strange. You simply go to File, Examples, yeah, it's, it's, it's Examples. Scroll down, 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 way down to FabGL. Check out the VGA examples, and somewhere over here is a PC emulator. When I read this, I thought, no, 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 this isn't possible, this is not working. It is. The whole thing takes a moment to compile. When you compile it, don't get nervous. On this machine I'm recording right now, this took about five to six minutes to compile the whole thing, because this is a lot to take in. I set up the IDE already, and you, as usual, you get the download with all the things over here. So this is set correctly. You simply choose your port that your ESP is connected to and simply upload it to, the, to there. Everything is already set in here. So what if you get bored with the ESP as a XT? Well, what about a VIC-20? Yeah, this thing can emulate a VIC-20, a Commodore 
wirkt funny. Uh, VC20, if some Germans are out there. And again, totally black magic for me. That this works is really, really great. I'll leave this compiling over here and then I'll show you the working thing on the video capture. And here we are at the VIC-20 emulator that we just uploaded. Um, all the games are, by the way, downloadable because the ESP has Wi-Fi, so why not connect to a server and you simply download the PRG? You could put your own PRGs on this. This is why there is an SD card in there. I haven't played around with this a lot, but let's do some gaming here. Yep, there is a real VIC-20 screen there and um, some timer counting down and stuff. And from here it's a bit guesswork which keys to press to start anything here. This is just for gaming, so um, let's see what happens. Uh, shit. Con oh, crap. Controls by a keyboard. Ugh. What's this? Ugh. Yeah. This is how good I am with these games, and while recording, this is even worse. So, uh, don't expect me to do any high scores here, and I probably are bored already, so uh, I should skip this here and... Oh, big paddle. <laughs> One eternity later. So, short verdict here. Is this any use to anybody? You know me, I probably say no. If I want to emulate a XT, I use my PC. If I want to emulate a VIC-20, I use my PC. Because right now I'm using the ESP with a VGA capture box, with an external keyboard, with some USB plugs. I have to use an SD card for that. I can have this all in software these days. So from a usability point of view, this is more Rube Goldberg territory. But from a technology demo point of view, wow. Again, what Fabrizio did here, I bow to you, mate. I bow to you. Really, really good stuff. You maybe want to check out his website. I'll link this somewhere in the descriptions over here, FabGL. There's a bunch of documentation around this thing, and uh, it's worth a read. So, should you get one of those boards and play around with this? Maybe for fun. I'll probably give this over to Richard, because he already said, oh, I want to have this if, you've, if you're done with that. For example, you could use a old XT case, simply throw this in there, you only need 5 volts with a USB power supply, and you have a working XT in there with a emulated hard disk. Not the worst thing to have. Or oh, this thing is so small, you can print a really, really tiny uh, case for a VIC-20 that just fits this, and use the emulation of a VIC-20 on that. This isn't feature complete. You don't have joystick ports, for example, but there are AO pins, so you probably can get this working and maybe get in contact with Fabrizio if you want to do more. I'm not sure if there is a C64 emulation feasible for that, because uh, the VIC-2 VIC chip adds hardware sprites and all this stuff. I'm not sure if the ESP could handle that. But again, from a technology demo point of view, this is brilliant. So, this is a short one. Not any self-written software today, not any big hardware here, just to have a bit, bit of fun with these uh, emulated stuff. And uh, Well, if you have one, let me know in the comments what you have done with it, or if it's sitting right on the shelves like mine is doing. I cobbled together an Arduino IDE with the included libraries, with all the settings in there. You find it in the descriptions as usual. And from here on, well, I hope you learned something today, and I see you in the next video. Bye for now.